Doug Henning's World of Magic will return after these messages. Make it a day, you and him. Now it's time for his first trim. Make it special, it'll be okay. A little snip, a little clip, now there it's not so bad. You're ready for a special treat at Burger King with Dad. Juicy burgers, just his size. Feeling special with a shake and fries. Make it special, make it Burger King. This is your Sears value update with some good news. Sears has a wide selection of great Kenmore washer dryer values. For just $299.95, you get this Kenmore washer with two speeds and three cycles, including permanent press, plus two water temperatures to help save energy and improve fabric care. And for just $229.95, this permanent press dryer with knit delicate cycle. For big home appliance values, you can count on Sears. We will return after the... Tonight, first time on TV, Animal House starring John Belushi. It was the Deltas against the rules, and the rules lost. The biggest comedy hit of all time, Animal House. Then, Eric Estrada and Howard Hespin meet the girls of every man's fantasy, women who rate a 10, following Animal House later tonight. The Cows of America bring you great taste on tap. There you go, fellas. Cold, delicious milk. No. Mm -hmm. Compliments of the ladies. They do it all the time. Hello? Ah, oh, fresh. Mmm, cold. It's good, but those women... Hey, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Horse? horse. Hm. Milk's the cold, the fresh, the... Ah, the mmm, milk's the one. Three for all. We now return to Doug Henning's World of Magic. What are you doing now, Ricky? I thought I'd get a head start in you. I learned the Indian rope trick before you did it. Well, that's very commendable. How are you coming along? Great. I got two-thirds of it locked in already. I have the Indian rope. Now, all I have to do is figure out the trick part, and I'll be all set. Well, I have to admire your attitude, but while you're working at that, I'm going to do a little night magic. Night magic? What's the difference between night magic and day magic? You're kidding. Why, they're as different as night and day. <laughs> Things come alive under the cover of darkness. You mean like ghosts and ghouls and goblins? No, I mean inanimate objects, like that rope you have, or pedestals, picture frames, even puppets. Watch closely as we transform the stage into a magical puppet shop. I'm going to go back here and join my friends. It's nighttime, and wonderful things are about to happen.
We will return after these messages. Lois. Oh, go away. I'm still on vacation. I let you wear the bikini. Yes, and for once I got a decent tan. Speaking of decent, about that new white dress? Shows off my tan. It's not going to stay white that way. Help keep it looking new. Use all temperature cheer and the right temperature. Temperatures don't matter. Oh, look. This dress was dirtied and washed five times the cheer way. In the right temperature, hot. It's about as white as mine. But look after five washings your way. Still dirty. See? Cheer in the right temperature helps keep clothes looking new. I like washing in hot, warm, cold. My clothes look nice. My new white dress is going to knock his eyes out. Not if I can help it. All temperature cheer helps keep your clothes looking new. All temperature. Head and Shoulders proudly announces good news and more good news. The good news? Head and Shoulders new conditioning formula for extra manageability. This new conditioning formula means I'll get the extra manageability I need without giving up dandruff control. Now that's good news. Sure is. I'll use it every time and get unbeatable dandruff control, easier combing, fewer flyaways. That's the good news about Head and Shoulders new conditioning formula. What's more good news? Just this. For millions of folks like me who manage just beautifully with regular head and shoulders, well, we still can. Head and shoulders new conditioning and regular formula, so everyone can control their dandruff and manage just beautifully. How's that for good news? <laughs> Tuesday, there's great comedy on NBC. First on Lobo. Wait for me, honey. The sheriff and Hildy pose as man and wife to expose a crooked sex clinic. Next, Grant puts BJ's ladies behind bars, and their only way out is the wildest football game since the longest yard. Oh, look, man, you might grow up. Watch February's Finest on NBC. Melissa Michelson, O.J. Simpson, together again in Goldie and the Boxer go to Hollywood. If Joe fights again, he could lose his life. If he doesn't, he could lose Goldie. A world premiere Thursday. Now, back to the program. Remember before the show, I handed a sack out to somebody in the audience. Who has that sack? I There's sure a gentleman do. right there. Could you bring that right up here, please? Uh, hello, sir. What's your name? Bob Lewis. Hi, Bob. How are you doing? It's Ricky, fine. you don't have to worry about your seat getting cold, because Ricky's going to go down there and keep it warm, OK? I you go right down to his seat. Jobs. <laughs> Remember, all great magicians had to start at the bottom. Well, what was your name again? Bob Lewis. Bob, how are you doing, Bob? OK. OK, you've been examining this sack, right? And you found yeah. out that it's a long strip of cloth sewn up both sides. It yes. only has one opening. That's the opening right here. Am I correct? Yeah. OK, here we go. Oh, before I do this, I'm going to give you back the sack, but I'd like you to take off your sports jacket, OK, Bob? OK. I think we should be about the same size here. There, examine the sack once more. Perfect fit. OK, here we go, Bob, the old sack escape. Where's the opening? This is how it starts. I just get into the sack. La -di -da. There we go. I really get into my work here. Yes, we go. <laughs> into the sack. Now, you notice, Bob, I'm pulling the sack up right over my head. Now, this is to show you. I'd like you to walk around the sack once more. I want you to see that it's absolutely solid on all sides. You notice how I'm poking on it, Bob? That's to show you that it is completely solid. Boy, it's dark in here. Yeah, notice how I'm poking and making sure it's solid. Good. OK. Now, you're probably wondering what this is all about, Bob. It's a wonderful illusion. You're going to see it now, OK? The great sack escape. Now, the girls are raising the sack up over my head. And they're going to tie the opening very tightly with this piece of white muslin. You may be interested in this sack. It actually comes from New York, from Sack Fifth Avenue. <laughs> I'm glad I'm in the sack when I said that. Boy. OK, Bob. They're tying it really tightly there in tight little knots. I hope you're watching very closely. Good. Now, Bob, I'd like you to take your left hand and hold on to the sack right at the top, OK? Try not to block the whole thing from the audience. Move over a little bit. Now, hold it very high. And whatever happens, Bob, don't let go. Ready? One, two, three. You notice, Bob, the sack is still tied. 
Look at that! And there is something inside, Bob. Would you like to reach down in there and see what's in there? Wonder what it is. There, get right down in there. Look at that. It's your sports jacket. Let's give Bob a nice hand, ladies and gentlemen. Bob, you can take this back to your seat and examine it very closely. Thank you for helping. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've all been waiting for, the fantastic Indian rope trick. Did I hear somebody say the Indian rope trick? Am I too late? No, you're just in time. This is probably the most famous illusion in magic, yet practically no one has ever seen it done. Historically, it goes back hundreds of years to the time of Marco Polo. That was before my time. <laughs> I know, but this is your time now, and I want you to watch very closely as you prepare to do the Indian rope trick. I'll do anything you say, as long as I don't have to climb that rope. You ready, Ricky? Now we're going to take the rope, and we're going to coil it down here inside of the basket. It just kind of goes right around in there. While I'm doing this, maybe you can get the top and throw the top on it. As we get ready for the Indian rope trick. Now you notice the top has a little hole. That's so the rope can come up. Are you ready? Here we go. Do you want to see it go higher? Sure do. Okay, here it goes. Woo! Now I'm going to climb the rope. Be careful. something, watch this. Ready, set, go! Doug, come back! I'll never doubt you again, I promise! I'll, I'll tell everybody you're the best magician in the world. I'll work for you for nothing. I'll even give you Marie Osmond's phone number. Come back, Doug. <laughs> Doug Henning's World of Magic will return after these messages. Tonight for dinner, let your dog... Go West for a new Chuck Wagon meal. A hearty stew-like Chuck Wagon that's better than before. Introducing new improved Chuck Wagon dog food. New Chuck Wagon makes a stew-like meal that's like eating out West. Hearty beef, chicken, and vegetable flavors in a savory broth when you add water. Hearty new Chuck Wagon. It's like eating out West, cause it's stew-like good. Magic's my business, and TWA makes magic when I travel on business. With Airport Express, I get both boarding passes in advance, so when I return, no, no waiting in line. line. Presto, straight to the gate. No one gets you there faster than TWA. You're Doug Henning. Yeah. Well, let's see a little magic. Well, I'm waiting. Tonight, first time on TV, Animal House starring John Belushi. Come on in. It was the Deltas against the rules, and the rules lost. Oh, it's the biggest comedy hit of all time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Animal House, parental discretion advised. Then, Eric Estrada and Howard Hessman meet the girls of every man's fantasy. They're the sexiest super ladies on the scene. They're the women who rate a 10. Right after Animal House, later tonight. We now return to Doug Henning's World of Magic.
Just as magical things can happen during a dark night, there are an equal number of wonders that appear when the sun comes out. for making this truly an evening full of wonder. Marie Osmond! Hey, Marie! Thank you. You're a very magical person. Thank you very much. Isn't you wonderful? My special guest, Shields and Yarnell! Hey! Thank you, you guys are great. And my very wonderful magical assistant, Ricky Schroeder! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> in our everyday lives, we often forget about the magic that's inside of us and in the universe that's all around us. And that's why we magicians are here, to kind of renew our sense of wonder for all this real magic. If you live with this feeling of wonder, your life will always be filled with joy. Thank you, and good night. Tuesday, Lobo and Hildy pair up as a married couple to catch a two-timing blackmail. Then BJ's ladies tackle the L.A. Rams on BJ and the Bear. Wednesday, find out if Skip Stevenson wins the best kisser contest on Real People, followed by President Reagan's State of the Union address.
Then Ed Too Tall Jones guest stars on different strokes, and Quincy causes a mistrial to clear a man of murder. Wednesday. Welcome to Doug Henning's World of Magic. With Doug's magical guests, Bruce Jenner, the beautiful Angelian, delightful Cherish Alexander, the fabulous Los Angeles Rams cheerleaders, a special guest appearance by Mr. Billy Crystal, and featuring a magical narrative by Orson Welles. could all join me because tonight marks the fulfillment of a long time dream. I know we all have dreams that we keep hidden in some secret place in our hearts and magicians are no different from the rest of us in that respect. My dream is in the shape of a house, a wonderful magical house where the improbable is possible and the impossible is probable. It may be a dream house but for tonight it is very real and I want you all to share it with me. A house, even a dream house, needs some guests to share the hospitality. And we have three of the nicest people I've ever met. First, Miss Angelian. Hi. Hey, how are you? Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so happy you're going to be with me in my dream house. Well, thank you, so am I. Any place where I don't have to do dishes is a dream house to me. <laughs> Thanks for the invite. Thanks, Anne. My next guest is Mr. Bruce Jenner. Well, thank you. I would not have missed this for the Olympics. I don't know about that, but I wouldn't miss it for anything else. Now our third guest, Miss Mini World, the delightful Cherish Alexander. Hi there, Cherish. Hi. How are you? Great. I'm especially glad that you could be with us because children can appreciate dream houses probably better than anyone else. I think you're right. Now that we're all together here, I think it's time to proceed to my magic house. And remember, all my magic is illusion. We never use any camera trickery. Follow me, please. my magical dream house. And this is a person who makes living so magical for me, my wife, Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Hi. Come on in. Come on in, folks. Sit down. Make yourselves comfortable. Now, everything in a magic house happens the same as it does in an ordinary house, only with a lot less effort. While we're here, we'll visit a number of rooms. This one, the room of magic of the future, the room of magic of the past, and a place hidden behind doors that have never been opened. What's behind this door? Oh, you happen to pick one of those doors. Come on over here and sit down, Cherish, and relax, make yourselves comfortable. Maybe I can get somebody some refreshment, some lemonade, perhaps? Mm, I think I'd like some chocolate milk. Were you sure you wouldn't like some lemonade? No, I like chocolate milk. Well, I'll see what I can do. I think I'll have some chocolate milk, too. The lemonade's terrific, Ann. Uh, yeah, but the chocolate milk is even better. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd like some, too. Hmm, how about you, Debbie? Some nice lemonade? No, nothing for me, thanks. I'll just watch. Oh, thanks a lot. Well, <laughs> here goes a little glass and a lot of chocolate milk. Hmm, you've heard of the miracle of the loaves and the fishes, right? Yeah. Sure well, can. it doesn't have quite the same ring with chocolate milk, but it still would be a miracle to me if I could do it. Watch. It's a little bigger glass here. Now I maybe have enough for, uh, I don't know, one and a half people. Let's see if I can make some more. Ah, now I think I have enough for Cherish and Anne. 
And you wanted some too, right, Bruce? Uh -huh. Let's see what I can do about that. Very big picture full here. Great. Now, with a big picture, let's see now. I have a small little glass here. Should be just about right for Cherish. There you go. And Anne. A little larger glass for you. Thank you. That's fantastic, nice Dad. Milk. Thanks. And uh, Bruce. There's one for you. <laughs> you like the chocolate milk? I love the chocolate milk, but on second thought, I think I'm going to have the lemonade. Oh, no. I'm just kidding. This is great. Really? Yeah, but here's looking at you. Even if I was looking at you, I never would have saw how that was done anyway. But. <laughs> it's magic. Remember, this is a magical house, and anything in it can become magical if you just believe. You mean, uh, this apple's magical? Ah, uh, I can do a very magical illusion with that apple. But first, Debbie, can I borrow your handkerchief, please? Yeah, I can sure. put that down, Cherish. There we go. Okay, Anne, I'd like you to take this handkerchief and so that you'll recognize it when you see it again. Perhaps you could just sign it right across the, the top, top of the no handkerchief there. No autographs, please. Just <laughs> kidding. Okay, you just okay. take the pen, write your name right across there, and so we'll recognize the handkerchief when we see it again. There we go. I'm going to do something so miraculous. I want you to all know the handkerchief. There we go. I can recognize that. That's your signature. Okay. Now, here we go with the apple. Bruce, I'm just going to take the apple and this little apple core here. I'm not going to core the apple. I'm going to put the core right through the center of the apple and make kind of a, a hole right through there like that. You know, speaking Good. of apples, I used to work at a ballet company where the director was so mean to the girls. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. Really? It was rotten to the core. Uh, <laughs> not even magic can help that joke. Here, Cherish, you hold on to that. Now, there's the magic scarf. The first thing we're going to do is take the little apple here. Don't eat it. Good. Put it right down there. You can see the hole right through the center. And I'm going to fold it up into a little package. Now, Anna, you hold on to the napkin. Hold it up in the air like that. And now... I'm going to get to the second part. This is the part I put the handkerchief in a safe place so that I won't lose it. La -di -da, di -da -da. Get it all down in there. Watch. It's gone. But there's an old magician's expression that says, a wrapped apple gathers no handkerchiefs. But sometimes, even a magician can be surprised. Look, we'll just rip off the, the napkin here. Hold on to the apple, Cherish. And look. Is that your signature? Is that your handkerchief? That sure is. You can hold on to that. And I'm going to give Bruce and Cherish here part of an apple. You just enjoy that, okay? Uh, that's, that's totally amazing, but can you do it with a grape? Well, only if you have a very short name. <laughs> Did you know that in every house there is an object that is very magical? Really? What is it? It's a mirror. A mirror gives you a very perfect illusion. But the thing about mirrors is that the objects reflected in them are just that. They're just illusions. But in my magical house, I can make those illusions become reality. Uh, I think you've been drinking too much of your chocolate milk. <laughs> no, it's true. Come with me over to this mirror. Let's start with these pieces of a magazine. Now, we all know that magazines make money, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't think there's ever been a magazine that can, can make money like this. Watch. Look at that. I'm impressed. <laughs> well, thank you. Now, I if you just hold this money up to the mirror, I'll show you how you can double your capital without moving a muscle. All we need is a solid plate glass mirror right here. Now, I'm going to try to grab the reflection right off the mirror. Watch. I think I used to read magazines when I could have been cutting them up and making a fortune. Unfortunately, it only works in a magic house. But let's see what other wonders are reflected here. The next thing we need is a beautiful, magical candle. I just light it, blow on the... And look at that. It changes into a beautiful flower for you. Now, with the magical candle, we can do many mysteries. The first one of which is to pass a solid flame right through the silk handkerchief. 
leaving it completely unharmed. Han, you take the candle, hold it right there. I'm going to try to catch the flame right down here in the mirror. They say that things look better by candlelight. If that be the case, now things should look twice as good. Don't you think? Now, I've got an ordinary piece of paper, Anne. Right Nothing here. Nothing you have is ordinary. Perhaps you're right, but in a magic house, a piece of paper can become a beautiful bird. Look, in the twinkling of an eye. Yeah, I see that. Certainly, but you realize, of course, that this bird is just made of paper, correct? It can't really do the things that real birds do. Why not? I thought you said this was a magical house and anything is possible. Well, almost anything, but I can't make a paper bird fly, but perhaps this is the next best thing. Watch as I again try to peel the reflection right off the mirror. There are a lot more wonders to behold in the room of the future, so don't wander off. Is the room of the future behind an unopened door? Well, we'll get to that later, but right now, let's get ready to leap through time. I'm ready. So am I. I think I'll stay here for a while. Why don't you put that magazine? I want to stay here and cut myself up a fortune. <laughs> Doug Henning's World of Magic will return after these messages. Classic combination when a dark delicious cookie meets an icy cold sensation like the one and only creamy crunchy chocolate O R E O keeps your milk from getting lonely. Oh, 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 the one and only Oreo and Oreo with double stuff from Nabisco. Hey guys. What's this, AIM? That's not AIM, it's new AIM Mint. AIM Mint sounds pretty fancy. Yeah, hey, this is serious stuff. It's got fluoride like AIM, and it's clinically proven to reduce cavity. Uh huh. And besides, I like the mint taste. And so does Susan. Susan? Introducing AIM Mint. Same great cavity fighting formula with a fresh mint taste. Now there are two ways to take AIM against cavities AIM Regular and new AIM Mint. We now return to Doug Henning's World of Magic. This is my room of the future. And one of the things that we see here is man's ability to bend the laws of nature to his own will. Sit down here, please. And I'm going to show you some futuristic close-up magic. Now, one of the first laws of nature that we, that we learn is that solids cannot go through solids, right? Right. And another one is that two objects cannot occupy the, the same space at the same time. Well, hold it. Have you ever been to the New York subway or rush hour? <laughs> You've got a point there. But aside from that, let me show you how we make our own rules in the room of the future with these, with these two decks of cards. Now, you'll notice that these two decks of cards occupy the same space at the same time, this center section here. Let's have a look. First, we have a blue pack of cards. Just going to run through here, and we'll, we'll just show you some of the blue cards. Now, I'd like to show you that the red deck is occupying exactly the same space. This center section here. Let's have a look now at the red pack of cards. Good. Now, Bruce, I'm going to take this shuffled pack of cards, and I'd like you to just select any one of the 52 cards as we go along here. Just reach out there and grab any one you want. Mm, no. You want that one. Okay, I'd like you to look at that and show the camera right up there. Show the okay. people at home so they can remember, too. You got that, folks? Okay, now, Bruce, I'd like you to take your card and just drop it right anywhere you want, right there. That'll do. Good. Now, when I pulled the red deck out of the box, one of the blue cards kind of snuck along with it. So there's one blue card in this red deck. Let's find the blue card. La tira, there it is right there. Now, Bruce, wouldn't it be amazing if this blue card matched the card you just selected? What was the name of the card? Seven of Hearts. Look at that. The Seven of Hearts. Isn't that amazing? Now, Cherish, I want you to select a card now. Let's see if you can do some magic, too. I'm just going to run through the deck here. Say stop anywhere. Stop. Right there? Look, you said stop 
right at the two of hearts. Now, in the world of the future, we can bend the laws of nature. Watch as I take the card that Bruce just looked at and I change it miraculously at the two of hearts. That's kind of some magic from the future here. Now, I'd like to show you something else very miraculous. We need one more card. In fact, we'll take two right here to do this. We have the five of clubs and the queen of clubs, okay? Now, I'm going to take the five of clubs and fold it kind of lengthwise, back out like that, okay? And then I'm going to take the old queen of clubs and fold it sort of widthwise like that. Now, the queen of clubs goes right down inside of the five of clubs, okay? And we take the whole thing and we turn it over. We have kind of a tunnel with the queen of clubs, and the five of clubs is going to slide right through the tunnel. Watch, here's what happens. I just take the five of clubs and I push it slowly through. Look. Look, the five of clubs has turned over. And it now is the reverse way. Look, I'll push it through again. And now they both face the same way again. Now, for a little finale, we're going to only push the five of clubs halfway through. Look. Aha. Now the five of clubs is half face in and half face out. Hey! Now I'd like to show you one of my favorite little illusions with this five of clubs. I'm going to rip it into four little pieces here, okay? And we'll put assemble the pieces right down here on the table. There we go. Cherish, why don't you move those cards? Hold on to those like that. Now, the only other thing I use besides these four little pieces are these little blue pieces of paper. Now, I'm going to magically have the four pieces of the five of clubs assemble under one of these little cards as I cover them in different ways. I can cover them like that, like that, or like that. Watch. Here goes the first little piece. Did you see that? Look. It went right over there. Not only did it join the other piece, but it actually fused itself onto it. You like that, Cherish? Let's try it again, this time with this piece. Don't worry, it's still there. Here we go. Did you see it go? Well, it did, look. There it is. Now I'm gonna do this once more. Here we go. Cover up the last little piece. And look, it's gone. Well, thank you. Thank you. Now, Bruce, I'd like you to take this card, and I've got another one down here. I'd like you to do exactly what I'm going to do, okay? Take the card and fold it in half, just like this, in a little kind of a package. There we go. Level it out. Now, I'd like you to tear the center of the card out, just along here. You're going to make kind of a little ring with the card. There we go. Just tear down here. I found out I could do some very great magic with rings of cards. Aha. There we go. And just tear the center out, and we'll be in business. Got it. We got it. OK. Now, just take the center and put it down on the table, because you only need the little ring that we have made. Do you have a ring that looks something like that? I hope Open so. it up. OK, good. Now, I'd like you to fold it lengthwise and put it down on the table because we're going to do a miracle with your little ring of a card. You got it? Okay, now what we should have is like I said, two little, two little rings, two little card frames. Now I'm gonna put your little frame right down inside of my little frame and fold it once, just like that. Okay, now if I just fold it again, you're about to see a miracle that you will remember as long as you live. Watch, we just move it down here to the bottom. Look, I'm blowing it, Cherish. Amazingly enough, you can see that your car has linked magically right on the mic. And there's absolutely no breaks in the cars. And who is you can keep that? Check it every 10 years or so and see that they're still linked. You'll well, continue I've, to be amazed. <laughs> well, I've learned not to doubt you, that's for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Bruce, if you'd be so kind to take this table from the future, past the present, back into the past. It was a present when the present was a future. I'd still appreciate it. <laughs> Wait a second, how's that again? That way. That's what I thought. <laughs> you, you see, that's magic talk. And when you get a little bit older, you'll understand it too. Is that all the magic in the future room? 
Not at all. I'm going to show you some wonderful sights that will amaze you for years and years. These are the celestial spinning rings. Just like the orbits of the planets, they circle constantly without any means of apparent propulsion. What keeps them going like that? Faith. Now watch what happens. Doug Henning's World of Magic will return after these messages. Silk is a harvest of nourishing things. What do you got there, mate? Camel soup, sir. Well, you're a learning boy. Soup's pumped full of nutrients. I thought they were noodles. Oh, <laughs> Betcha didn't know that Campbell's Chicken Noodle Soup has more protein per calorie than peanut butter. Ah, that was just the ticket. Okay, mate. How would you like to help me with the wheel on the way home? Hi, Grandpa. Campbell's Soup is good food. Time. The truest test of any product is how it performs over time. Now, this. Magnavox Star System Color Television. Designed for the highest reliability in Magnavox history. Design concepts, technology, advanced manufacturing systems for a picture as reliable as it is bright and clear. Magnavox. The brightest ideas in the world are here. Today. Fresh. Clean. The fresh, clean flavor of Wrigley Spearmint Gum lasts a long, long, long time. One little house, the family prepares for Laura's new child, but Almanzo has a stroke. Leaving Laura in premature labor, witness the birth of a new generation. Then relive old hometown memories as Johnny goes home. Where were you when I was going to school? Visit his old school. It's a good thing you fellows all have secretaries. Johnny Carson finally fulfills his childhood fantasies. It's an all-new special full of surprises. Right after a special 90-minute Little House Monday. 
return to Doug Henning's World of Magic. It's so nice to have you back here in the future with me. How did you make out with the magazine? Well, I cut him up just like you did, and I think I can make a fortune if I can just find someone who wants to buy a lot of cut-up magazines. <laughs> Forget that. Now I'd like you to help assist me in a remarkable exhibition of futuristic wonder. Would you like that? Sure, why not? Okay, here they come. As we all know, that a solid cannot pass through a solid. But here in the world of the future, all rules are suspended. And here is something else that is suspended. Look, it's a big solid disc. Now, this is where you come in. This machine is designed to accommodate this solid disc. It kind of slides right to the center here. I plan to place a young lady on this table and move the disc straight down to the center of the table, passing directly through her middle. And if I pass go, do I get $200? <laughs> no, but what will happen is that a solid will actually pass through a solid right before your eyes. What do you think of that? I think it's wonderful. Especially if I'm not the solid it passes through. <laughs> okay, you help me with the table, and Nancy will do the other part. Here we go. Hey. Okay, Nancy, Happy you girl. take off your gloves, and I'll get the shoes here. There we go. Good. Now, she lies right down here on the operating table. Uh-oh. Good. Okay, now we're just going to place these little boxes over her body here. Lower the disc. Lower the disc. revolve the table here. Okay. Good. And we'll have a look inside these boxes. This is one of my favorite parts. How are you doing there, Nancy? Great. Terrific. Let's have a look at this end. Okay. Why don't you go around the other end and we'll show the people the table all the way around. Okay. Okay, here we go. A solid, right through a solid. Hey! Okay, and we're gonna play catch. Oh. Here it comes. You ready? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> you did that so well. Thank you. Okay. Now, here comes an exciting part. Okay, we're gonna separate her. Here we go. Okay, let's put her back together again. There we go. Let's close the doors. Okay, just turn around. Just like this. Let's see if the operation's been a success. Doug Henning's World of Magic will return after these messages. Fresh and clean as a whistle. That's Irish Spring. Fresh and clean as a whistle. Irish Spring's green and white stripes have two truly effective deodorants. Two deodorants. And a fine, fresh scent. So you're fresh and... 
green is all whistle. That's Irish Spring deodorant soap. Legendary green and sunshine yellow Irish Spring both get you fresh and clean. Hey, Josh, all dishwashing liquids a real lemon. What? You... Oh, look! They squeeze real lemon juice into Ajax Gold. Sniff. Mmm, lemon scent. But how does it clean? Good as gold. Watch Ajax Lemon Fresh Sauce level this mountain of dishes covered with greasy spaghetti sauce. From first greasy dish to last, Ajax Gold gets dishes so grease-free, they squeak. And remember, Ajax Gold has real lemon juice. Doug Henning's World of Magic will return after these messages. Tonight, the action gets down and dirty when John and Potch tangle with some foxy car thieves on an all-new chips. Then, first time on network TV, George Burns in Going in Style. What happens when three guys who don't know how to load a gun try to stick up a bank? A comedy to steal your heart later tonight, right after an all-new chips on NBC. You've never seen savings like this before. It's TV and Appliance Week at the Nebraska Furniture Mart with sensational buys in every department. Get unheard of savings on the new Zenith you've been waiting for. Compact Zenith portables, table models, gorgeous color consoles, videotape recorders. The prices are so low, they can't be mentioned on television, but you can come in and see them for yourself. Save like never before now during TV and Appliance Week at the Nebraska Furniture Mart, Omaha. At Channel 3, the news comes first. A return to Doug Henning's World of Magic. Ever since the beginning of time, man has been searching for a way to become immortal. Woman, too. Sure. Through lots of hard work and study, I've come up with a machine that can preserve a person forever. You mean like a phonograph record? Well, a phonograph record can only preserve the voice. More like a video disc, then. Well, a video disc only preserves the voice and the image. I'm talking about immortality. Being able to contain everything about a person in one magical disc that can be stored away and, when needed, bring the person back to life with everything intact. Uh, Doug, that sounds a little far-fetched. No, it's a lot far-fetched, but it works. Bruce, want to be immortalized? Ah, uh, no. He's immortalized already. It's my turn now. <laughs> okay, just step this way into the incredible immortality machine. And just take off your sh little shoes there. Okay. Good, I don't want you to get any dirt in the intricate machinery here. Just stand right there. Alrighty. Okay, here we go. Now we lower the curtain. <laughs> Terrific. How do you feel? Like a pair of baby shoes about to be bronze. <laughs> Don't worry about a thing. I've done this hundreds of times. Successfully? Well, dozens of times. There's a lot. You're welcome. Put your little feet out there. Okay. There we go. Good. Are you ready? Here we go. There we go. You let? Uh, just how far does this thing go? Watch closely and you'll see. I'm getting too short for a tattoo now. <laughs> you ready, Ann? Uh-huh. You're about to become a disc. <laughs> I hope I'm a million sellers. <laughs> I told her she should quit smoking. <laughs> Don't worry, she's just fine. Yep. Uh, I was just wondering, is she gonna be a 78, a 45, or a 33 and a third? No matter what I do to her, Anne will always be a 10. Here we go. Raise the... The plunger there? Ah, uh, good. Now we just lift up the curtain and we'll see what we have. Here she is. Anne is now immortalized forever. And also a little flat. Well, it's only a temporary condition. Here, look at the library of my recent successes. Yeah, sure. There we go. They're all in the same state as she is now. How would you like to see one materialize? Yeah, sure. Who have you got? Well, I've got lots of people. I've listed them under these categories. We have singer, dancer, actress. That's the one I'm going to put Anne under here. We also have athletes, movie stars, comedians. Uh, what, what? Comedians. 
Yeah, uh, could we, uh... Okay, let's you know, see now. Down. There we go. How about this one? <laughs> he always breaks me up. <laughs> well, I've already broken him up, so we're even. But let me just slip him down here in the machine. There he goes right there. Lower the curtain, and away we go. Squish like that, is he still gonna be funny? I hope so. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, here he is, a star of his own new TV series, Billy Crystal! I have a stiff neck you wouldn't believe. Uh, well, Doug's still working out some of the kinks. Yeah, I feel like a slinky, you know? Billy, Bruce has never believed that this thing's really gonna work, but now I think he's a believer, too. Oh, it works all right. You can ask any of us here in the library. Uh, who do you have here? Oh, come on over, take a look. Let's see, let's see, look at this. Oh, what? Oh. Nixon. You mean if we put him in the machine, he'll be recreated? Yeah, but it says here he's missing 18 and a half minutes. <laughs> Maybe I can put it back. Nah, I don't bother. Huh? I am not a disc. I am not a disc. <laughs> Let's see who else we have here. Ooh. There's a little one. Yeah, this is Gary Coleman. Ah, yeah. that's cute. A little deep there. It's one of my one for children there. Another one. Oh, this is another statesman here. Oh, this is Ed Meese. Yeah. <laughs> and he's very important. You know, if he resigns, Reagan will be president. <laughs> You can hear the Nixon one it's still talking. It's going, I am not a disc. I am not a disc. <laughs> Let's see, what else have we got here? Uh, oh, Bruce, this is for yeah. you. Which one? This is special for you. I'll give you a hint, okay? okay go. Uh, talks a lot. Huh? Bad to pay. Howard Cosell. In Pison. There he is, huh? I'd like to see him. You put him in? Oh, no, 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 no. Once you put him on, he, it's hard to get him to turn off. You know, just on and on and on. Bruce, you don't want to go through all that stuff again, you know. Yeah. He's always been good to me. Yeah, but you'll hear him going, Bruce Jenner, in retrospect, looking back, Montreal, 1976, 8,618 points, America's Adonis, the world's greatest athlete, if you will. Now a sad and pathetic man. Only immortalized. Wait, I, I've heard enough. I've heard enough. I know. Well, I think we spent enough time here in the room of the future. So now I'd like to take you to show you some magic of the past. Well, that sounds fine. Uh, Billy, you want to go with us? No, I think I'm going to stay, guys. You go ahead. There's a uh, Bo Derek disc I think I'd like to look into. I just want to discuss her feelings about unilateral disarmament, you know? Mm -hmm. Isn't he something? Always trying to improve his mind. <laughs> we'll see you later, Billy. Enjoy. Okay. All right. This is the corridor that takes us to the room of the past. Uh, do you have a room that you can make uh, hunger disappear? Of course. What's it called? The kitchen. <laughs> you go straight through the door and turn to the left. All right, well, I'm going to go grab a snack. I'll catch up with you later. Enjoy yourself. I'll be over here in the room of the past. Cherish, I thought I left you in the room of the future. What are you doing here? Is it this the door to the future room? No, this is another one of those doors that I told you about earlier. Am I ever going to see what's behind it? When the time is right. What are all these things? Ah, uh, this is the room of the past. I keep many of my souvenirs from the past in here, along with many of the antique illusions that have been handed down from magician to magician over the ages. I'm very proud to be the keeper of these treasures. And when it's my turn, I'll be happy to hand these down to the next generation to, to kind of keep the art alive. That's nice. Yeah. What's that thing? Oh, that's called the Jared Box. It was used in the 1920s in the Greenwich Village Follies. It created quite a sensation, too. What does it do? Well, it makes people vanish. How would you like to get inside and just disappear? I'd rather see people appear than disappear. We can do that, too, if you'd like. Watch. Okay, but they could have been crammed in there all the time. Oh, you think so, huh? Just keep watching, girls. You 
the box a little turn here. There we go. Paris, you can see underneath throughout the whole illusion. Let's see if I can produce some more cheerleaders. Watch. Hi there. Nine. That's more like it. But if you don't mind, I'd like to look in there myself. Oh, sure, go ahead. Yeah, you get right up there. What do you think? It's dark in here. And it's not very big either. Let's see if we do some more cheerleaders. Okay. This is fun. <laughs> How many does that make? Twelve. Here's a few more. Fifteen? I don't believe it. Bruce should see this. Hmm, that's a good idea. Maybe we can arrange for Bruce to see this. Bruce! <laughs> Did I make a right turn? <laughs> Wait a second. As Al Jolson used to say, you ain't seen nothing yet. Watch this. World of Magic will return after these messages. Big Mac, fillet your fish, quarter pounder french fries, icy coke, thick shake, sundaes, and apple pies. A sing, a song with a taste. Quarter pounder french fries. You can only find in one place. McDonald's calls you deserve a break today. Big Mac. Fillet your fish. Quarter pound. French fries. Icy Coke. Thick shakes. Sundays. And apple pies. And the cup ran away with the spoon. Nikki? Nikki? I think it's time to call the doctor. Nikki? Oh, the golden moment's arrived. I'll just call ahead, dearest. Everything's set. Over the years, bell phones have always been dependable. Today, our phones can do some pretty amazing things. Some even do the dialing for you. But just like always, you can still depend on Genuine Bell. Dr. Kent. Ed, say hello. Dr. Kent. The Bell Phone Center. It's for you. Howard, Susan, this is your cousin Howard. He's going to spend the summer with us. The whole summer? Uh -huh. M&M's chocolate candies. The rich milk chocolate melts in your mouth, not in your hand. M&M's, m &Ms make friends. Join me Monday on Late Night with David Letterman. Also scheduled are Andy Rooney, comedian Franklin Ajay, a few commercials, and our first nude audience. Tuesday on Father Murphy. I want to be a spy. Rodman fiendishly plants his son at the orphanage in order to close down the school. Rodman's son knows I'm not a real priest. Then a traveling singer is determined to write the last verse to the ballad of Brett Maverick. The one you're looking for is probably my brother Bart. An all-new Tuesday right after Father Murphy on NBC. We now return to Doug Henning's World of Magic. Hi there, little fella. Now, what is this thing, Doug? Ah, uh, this is a wonderful old illusion created by a master magician in Europe around the turn of the century. The amazing thing about these old illusions is that they still confound the viewer, even after hundreds of years. Look, I'll show you this canary cage illusion. Here's how it works.
like to show you a, another great favorite. This is my little aquarium bowl illusion. I have these little bowls with my little friends. Hi, fellas. Bruce, I'd like you to take this into the cloth and cover the bowl, just as if we were covering it up for the, for the night here. Okay. There we go. was actually done by Houdini in his last show. <laughs> Every magician has his own style of performing. And now I'd like to do a famous one called The Rope Illusion as it might have been done by a few of my favorites. Cherish, you hold on to the scissors. Now, the first magician was a man named Chung Ling Su. He was a very elegant magician, graceful and stylish, and he always worked in pantomime. This is how he probably would have done the, the rope illusion. was Harry Houdini. He was a very confident and forceful performer. He would practically challenge his audience to doubt his remarkable abilities. Here is a piece of rope, Bruce. I'd like you to take this and examine it. Make sure it's a very solid, strong piece of rope. Now, I'd like you to take this rope and cut it through the center so it would be impossible for me to put it back together. Cut right through the center there. Good. Now, Houdini was also a master of knot tying. It was said that he could even tie them with his toes. Here is a strong man. You hold on one end of the rope, and I'll hold on to the other. Watch as Houdini defies the laws of believability. Examine it once again. I'm sure you'll find that the rope is indeed very solid. Right. <laughs> the last magician I'm going to represent is easiest for me. It is me. Here's how I like to do the cut and restored rope illusion. Bruce, I'd like you to take the scissors and cut right through the rope. Right through the old center, we'll cut it again. Good. Now watch as a rope goes back together right before your eyes at the count of three. One, two, three. Here, you can examine the rope once more and you can keep that as a souvenir. All right, thank you. Now I'd like to show you a wonderful mystery. It's right over here. And as you can see, it's been around here for quite some time. Here, Cherish, you hold on to that tray. And Bruce, you hold on to this one. We also have a little stand right here. There we go. Put that right down here. Now, as that master of magic Merlin used to say, this one's really gonna knock your socks off. An empty tub. to him. There we go. Be real gentle. Now, bring him right over here to the to the box. Put your little guy right down there. Hi there. Yes, you're going to have a little speech in the show, too. Okay, Cherish, you can... There we go. Just get his feet. You can open the box, and we'll put him right down inside. There we go. I want to make you nice and comfortable down in there. And Bruce, let's have a look at your little guy. Hey. Yes. Don't worry, I'm a vegetarian. No problem. Yes. He goes right down inside the little box. Good. And now we're about to leave the room of the past. But I'd like to leave you with one thought. If you just stand back here, Cherish, where do the ducks go? 
Hold on to that. Doug Henning's World of Magic will return after these messages. Folks around these parts are a mite confused about Campbell's Chunky. Like chunky chicken here. On the one hand, it's a soup. A body can eat with a spoon. On the other hand, it's filled with chunks of chicken and mushrooms and noodles. A body can eat with a fork. Question is, is it a soup or is it a meal? Clear to me, Chunky is the soup that eats like a meal. Chunky chicken. It's the soup that eats like a meal. How does she do it? Not a hair out of place. The difference is me. How does she do it? Her hair looks as soft and silky as her make. The difference is mink. Introducing Mink Difference. It's different from any other hairspray. It puts a silky hold on your hair because it's enriched with precious mink oil in every drop. So your hair feels soft and silky, like mink. But it really keeps you in style. New Mink Difference. On NBC Nightly News, a profile of two men who are part of America's Hill Country heritage. Together, they're keeping a folk music tradition alive. Tomorrow on NBC Nightly News. Search for UFOs is on. Then, Natalie catches her father with another woman. The creep should be shot. Facts of life. And Rory drives Sydney crazy when she loses her job. Love, Sydney. Wednesday, a great night of entertainment on NBC. We now return to Doug Henning's World of Magic. I think the time has finally come to see what's behind this door. Great! Can I have the key? Ah, the key. The key to opening this door is believing in your own magic to do anything that you've ever dreamed of. I believe! I believe! Try the door! I did it! I actually did it! Welcome to my magical backyard. Oh, look! You even have your own carousel. This backyard also has its own legend. A story about two lovers that was told many, many years ago. Once you walk through this door, you too will hear that story repeated once again. I want to hear. Let's go. Here we go. Many years ago, in a kingdom far away, lived a prince who fell in love with a beautiful princess. They would meet near a carousel similar to this and declare their love for each other. But a wicked sorcerer came and cast a spell on the lovers. Their hearts became as unfeeling as two wooden horses. The sorcerer felt his work was done and went away. Once he was gone, the two lovers tried hard to break the spell. They would meet in hidden places and try to recapture the love they first felt for each other. It was like trying to find the end of a circle. The more they met, the more they found the spell was weakening and their hearts coming back to life through the power of love. the spell. Feeling very secure in their newly awakened love, they believed there was no danger in parting from each other for periods of time. Their love would still make them feel close. But one day the prince Princess found themselves on opposite sides of the kingdom. And they felt a great longing in their hearts for each other, so they decided to travel towards one another and meet once again. The prince and his beloved both believed that the only way they could ever be truly united would be to have their two hearts 
unite into one unbreakable heart through the magic of love joined together for eternity. joining my world of magic and for visiting my dream house. My wish is that each of you may have all your dreams realized and that the power of your own inner magic will come to live in your hearts forever. Now I'd like to thank my wonderful guests for lending their magical presence to this very special evening. First of all, Miss Ann Gillian. I forgot, she's still a disc. Well, let's see if I've got a little more magic left. And... I'm so glad to have you back. How do you feel? I feel immortal. And thank you for a wonderful evening. Oh, it's been my pleasure. Thank oh. you, Anne. And now I'd like to also thank Mr. Bruce Jenner, my good friend. Thank you, Bruce, for your It's been amazing and a pleasure. Thank you. The delightful Miss Cherish Alexander. Thank you, Cherish. Mm. My beautiful wife, Debbie. Her first color.